With this part of my recipe, I'm trying to open your mind to easily incorporate things that you might not like, like spinach, into recipes that will just make it that much fun. You probably won't even taste the spinach, but you'll get all the benefits of it. Because guess what? Usually you pair this with other traditionally healthy main dishes. Now all the ingredients are linked down below, but as you can see, it's a pretty small list. I have some water at a rolling boil over here. I've rinsed my spinach and I'm gonna boil it because we will be blanching it. So after two to three minutes in this boiling water, you wanna prepare an ice water bath and just transfer the cooked spinach into that ice water bath. That's gonna shock the leaves. That's gonna help keep the green pigment, the chlorophyll, intact within the leaves so that when we actually blend it later on, it's gonna be nice and green. Now to blend it, I'm just gonna transfer all the leaves and use as little water as I possibly can to get a smooth liquid because that's the liquid we'll be using to turn these parathas into spinach parathas. And the least amount of water that you can use guarantees that you will likely need to add more regular water later on, which will make sure that you don't have wasted spinach because you diluted it too much. Confused yet? We want to keep it green. So try to use all the spinach in the dough so that it stays the most flavorful and the greenest it can. The trick is to add as little as you can and adjust by adding a couple of tablespoons more. I was able to get a pretty good guess and I'll put that guess down below. But it may differ for you, so just keep a close eye. Now in my mixer bowl over here, I have my atta flour, which is just perfect for rotis. And this mixer bowl here, I have my atta flour, which is perfect for rotis. Something to keep in mind though, is whole wheat flour is not exactly one-to-one -to, -one to atta flour. It's a different blend. And there goes our spinach. It looks beautiful over here. We're gonna start mixing now. But before that, I'm gonna add in a touch of salt because you wanna season not only the, the flour itself, but most importantly, the spinach. We all have had plain unseasoned spinach. It's not pleasant. So just continue to knead until you have a dough that is soft, supple, and not sticky to touch. It doesn't matter if you knead it by hand in a food processor or in a stand mixer, like what I'm doing. Just use the dough hook and you'll have the perfect dough. Sometimes auto flour needs you to kind of mop up all the dried bits to make sure that the auto dough itself gets to the right consistency. Sometimes it just doesn't do it itself. So just keep a close eye. I'm sure if you've use your mixer for dough before, you will know the little hits and misses and how to address those for your own setup. And this is what it will look like at the end. It looks like something that the Hulk would eat. Now, we wanna let the dough rest. We just put a lot of energy into it, heat into it. And if you try to roll it out right now, it will tend to have tension enough to spring back. We wanna make sure that it's relaxed so that it doesn't spring back it stretches out easily and that will ensure the softest parathas. Now to actually make it, you need a tava pan. If you don't have that, get a cast iron pan and get that heated. You wanna make sure there's a tiny bit of smoke so get your fans on. And something that helps to make parathas special, which I recommend you do if it's a special occasion, obviously, or if it's your first time making these, to really have it at its peak is to have some molten key on hand. Molten versus room temperature, big difference. So get it molten in the microwave or the stove top. Now we'll be making three layer parathas and there's some easy steps to follow to get there. So get a small golf ball size portion and you want some uh, parathan or some flour that is used to help roll out your paratha that prevents it from sticking because it might happen. So you dust it with the flour in the parthan and then you roll it out or even pat it out 
if it's soft enough into a small disc, maybe like four to oh, six yeah. inches in diameter. You put some ghee on one half and then you apply some flour right on top, kind of like a thin layer of flour. Then you fold it and then you do the same steps as earlier. So you roll it out now, a bit bigger into like a half moon almost, and then you apply ghee on the other half. So the bottom triangle essentially. You do the flour step again and you fold it by itself and now you'll have what resembles a triangle. And now all you have to do is gently roll it out, making sure you apply gentle, soft pressure on each corner so you get a paranta that resembles a triangle. Now there's no need to rush it, I just want you to do it right. And if you do it right, then this is what you're gonna do next. So on our hot tava pan, I'm gonna add that paranta and then we let it start to cook. You start to see bubbles coming on the top. And when you see that, take a peek, maybe flip it. You'll see some golden brown bubbles. And now you're gonna apply a bit more heat on the top, on the sides. And then you're gonna roast the paranta with that ghee. And what that helps to do is it adds heat, it adds crispiness, and that heat goes into those layers, expands those layers, and the ghee already inside those layers yeah, that does the same stuff. It makes it flavorful, moist, and really make sure that the final bread has all kinds of layers. It's almost like having a basic croissant. Croissant is like having hundreds of layers. This is like the ultra basic version of that, but Indian style. And then you keep doing that again and again, and you'll notice from the first paranha you ever make to the last one, for one batch, you would just fly through it because it's that much fun and you'll be seeing your improvement just by doing it, just like anything else. So go ahead and enjoy this paranta recipe with your favorite main. This paranta recipe will change your life because it's just that easy to make and you can make it in all kinds of variations. One of them being just your regular old layered paranta, this one being with spinach, there's so many others, discover them, link them down below. And once you have discovered them, let me know which one you want me to make next.